Hey viewers, my name is Kara. I'm your host for Tuesdays here on The Pagan Perspective. This week we're talking about magic around our house. This week's topic comes from Mad Brad and the exact text will be in the description of this video as always. But the question was essentially, I'm not actually looking at it right now so I can't read it word for word, but the question was about how we go about making our homes spiritual and or magical. And then the secondary question was, do we have any specific practices for like cleansing or protection and things like that? This is probably going to be a direct upload video because I am recording it so much later in the day than usual. I don't even want to take the extra time that it would take to edit it, render it, upload it, all of that. So this is probably just going to be a direct upload from my phone. So there will be no editing or anything like that. You won't have seen the little intro with our theme music or anything. And also the lighting is a bit off because it is later in the evening. I wanted to record this earlier, but I don't know what it is about Tuesdays. I feel like Tuesday must be just the day that all of my neighbors decide to do stuff outside and it's so noisy. I tried recording a few different times throughout the day so that I could have natural light, I could even be outside, but it was just really noisy every time and I was like, I don't, I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> I'll just wait till later. And then also it's been um, quite a few pretty difficult mental health days for me and also my partner, but definitely, I mean, I can mostly only speak for myself and I'm sure that that is the case for many people right now. Um, so yeah, I had been planning on doing like videos for my channel at the same time that I do the ones for Pagan Perspective. I don't have one planned for my personal channel today and it's uh, later in the day that I'm doing this one at all. So I'm just focusing on this one and I don't know when I'll be doing one for my personal channel, but I just wanted to start by acknowledging that and saying, you know, I think everybody's going through a lot right now for many different reasons um, between it being Pride Month and in the United States there have been some positive news things for LGBTQ plus rights. There have also been some big negatives of stuff that our administration is trying to do to take away rights and protections for the community. There's also all of the protests surrounding um, to everybody working toward black rights, um, that seems weird to say, it's human rights, but uh, racial justice, social justice, black lives matter, you know what I meant by that, uh, even though it came out a little strangely. And uh, anti-racism is something that I focus on a lot in my personal practice as well, so that's definitely been my biggest focus. And on top of that, we are still dealing with a pandemic for like a month now, a lot of people have been acting like there is no more pandemic and just kind of like ignoring it and like everything's fine again, but it's really not. People are still uh, dying from pandemic as well as, um, yeah, you know, lots of other human causes, um, to put it lightly. So yeah. And then for those of us who maybe already have anxiety and depression, I'm sure that it can be kind of piling up and that has been the case for me. So I will say before even going into this that it can feel, sorry, let me adjust here. It can feel a little bit weird that we're even trying to talk about other things. But at the same time, I know that some people need to take a break and I think it is okay to take a break. It's okay to rest. I've definitely been doing that the past couple days. We need to rest to recharge, refuel, uh, recenter ourselves before we can then dive back into educating ourselves and making changes in policy, in legislation, but also in our personal lives and in our communities. So, um, you know, for me, rest is to recharge and get working again, not to 
ignore it and pretend like it's not happening. But with that said, um, it's important to take little breaks. I know that, but still it feels weird to even try to be talking about anything else in a video. <laughs> so forgive me for um, mentioning it, even when it's not the topic of the week. It's something that's constantly on many of our minds. It is something that many people never get to get away from. They can't just ignore it. Um, it's a privilege for us to be able to set it aside for a moment and not deal with it and then pick it back up. Not everyone can do that because for people for whom it is their lived experience, there is no break. Um, but yeah, it's something that is always a topic of conversation in my household, news that we are always trying to keep aware of. So that's my little update. All of this to come into how, how do I make my household a spiritual or a magical one? And um, yeah, so in my household, a lot of my magic is social justice geared. And um, in that regard, I suppose, if we're talking like physical things and like tangible things that I do to make my household spiritual or magical, I would say probably the presence of altars uh, in that they consistently remind me of the work that I want to be doing. So I typically have multiple little altars sort of around the house for different things. I don't actually have as many set up here and now, uh, like in this current house. We've been here for over a year, but I never set up all of the other little altars like I did uh, when I lived by myself in one of my old like apartments and stuff. I had a lot more little specific altars all over the place. Like every surface of my house basically is an altar at some point um, for many different things. And they can be, you know, there's the working altars where I might actually do a spell or do a ritual. I usually have a seasonal altar. Sometimes I have had elemental altars, so specifically ones that stay up that are just for each element, earth, air, fire, water. Um, and then I might have deities, uh, t altars to specific deities or archetypes or other spirits, altars to the ancestors and descendants, the fae, um, specific allies and guides, or abstract concepts like themes, energies like love, justice, things like this. So I would say tangibly, like a physical object type thing that I do uh, the, are the altars, I would say, is how I tangibly remind myself of the spiritual and magical work that I want to be doing and those spaces for that work are all throughout the house. Even if they're not working altars, even if they're more like shrines or devotional spaces where the point of it is just to have the collection of things that remind me of the energy or the purpose or the intention of what it is for and spending some time looking at it and maybe meditating on the concepts or interacting with it in that way, um, even that is something that I oft often do. Um, but even more so than that, the more intangible thing really is that for me, it's mainly about cultivating a magical mindset. It's about living my daily life, which some people might want to try to make the distinction and call it mundane, you know, the everyday, the non-magical stuff and actually cultivating a mindset where all of those things are magical. They are part of the magic. And I've given examples of stuff like this before, so you may have heard me say this before. At the risk of repeating myself, which I do quite often anyway, um, you may have heard me already say in the past that, for example, when I wash the dishes, I have almost always 
either not had a dishwasher or had a dishwasher that didn't work. Um, so it's a very nice drying rack, but most of my life I've had to hand wash dishes and, you know, as a chore, it's like, oh, this is a thing I have to do. This sucks. I don't want to do it. But when I do it, if I frame it as service in devotion to the spirits of my household or the goddess or the universe or whatever, if you're framing a chore, something that you typically maybe don't want to do but have to do, if you intentionally do it and um, make it where the purpose is kind of giving that energy to something else that you value, it can change the way that you look at that thing. And also for me, you know, washing dishes obviously involves water. So if we think of it as being a time to commune with the element of water, observe water, interact with water, then it gives it a different focus. It gives it more of a magical or a spiritual focus. Same thing with any time I take a shower or a bath. That is a cleansing experience. So I include an actual intentional energetic cleansing every time I take a shower or a bath. And those are just kind of the most easily, you know, ready examples because it's water, so it's very obvious. But, um, you know, when I go for a walk, I'm... I'm enjoying the fresh air, so I'm interacting with air and the breeze and everything like that, but I'm also paying attention to my feet on the ground and grounding and communing with earth in that way. And if it's a sunny day out, I'm stopping to feel the rays of the sun on my face, on my arms, and whatever, and feeling the warmth and seeing the light, and that's communing with fire. So... Those are various examples just with the elements because I feel like those are pretty obvious examples, pretty readily available examples. And that's just overall um, serves as a larger example of what I mean by cultivating a magical mindset because these might be things that you're already doing no matter what, but it's about changing the way you think about them to think about how can we make that what we would consider a spiritual experience. You know, communing with fire or working with fire doesn't always have to be lighting a candle or sitting around a campfire. Although, when we do have a fire in our backyard, of course, that is a big thing as well. Um, and we might do specific rituals for full moons or dark moons or whatever. If the weather is nice, we like to go outside and have a fire. We haven't gotten to do that yet this year because it was really rainy so far on any of the kind of nicer days. But I hope to be able to do that soon. But So there are those more obvious things where it's like, oh, now we're going to do a ritual, right? But it's, it's more than that. It's on every day, no matter what I'm doing, framing my own consciousness so that everything I'm doing is spiritual, everything is magical. And then the second part of the question from Mad was like, do we have any specific cleansing or protection practices? I always cleanse my homes. Uh, when I move, I always cleanse the space I am moving out of to kind of remove any of my influence from it and kind of set it back to, you know, square one for whoever's going to come into it next. So I did that for every room or home that I ever lived in, as well as my dorm rooms in college every year. And then whatever new space I am moving into, I like to cleanse it first before we move any of my stuff in, before definitely before I start unpacking. If anything, if I have to like bring things into the new space before cleansing it, that's fine, but I won't unpack anything until I've cleansed it. That's really the only time that I do like a big, what you might uh, think of as like a house blessing, going around and cleansing every single room top to bottom with um, herbal smoke, incense smoke, um, 
salt water, you know, anything like that. Um, the only time that I do that is when I move. I know some people do that on a very regular basis, but for me, I also don't usually have a lot of people like in and out of my house. I'm a little bit of a hermit in that regard, and my partner is too. We only have certain people over at our home and it's never like super often. So moving in and moving out, I feel like makes sense to do the full on like house blessing cleansing type thing. But other than that, just throughout like living, I don't feel that that's necessary on a regular basis for me personally, because it's typically just me and my partner and whatever fur babies we might have and whatever guests we might choose to invite into our home. But there's not typically anything coming in or out of my home that I feel like brings in bad energy, you know? There's not a lot that that makes me feel like the energy has become negative at all. Um... If that were to happen, then sure, I would do, like, a big cleansing, I guess, like that. But otherwise, it, that's not, like, a regular thing that I do. Regular things that I do would be, like, on a really nice day where I just feel like the air is so beautiful and crisp and wonderful. And just when you breathe it in, it just makes you feel more alive. If there's a day like that, I like to open all of the windows and let that fresh, beautiful, crisp air roll through the house. And I imagine, um, I really like the phrase, just the, the idea of the winds of change. So when I do that, I like to open all the windows and I let the, the breeze go right through the house. And I always think of the phrase, let the winds of change come rolling on through. And so that becomes a a spell of sorts, a cleansing spell, um, which, you know, is like a thing that other people would consider very mundane. Lots of people do that. You open up the windows to let fresh air roll in, push the stale air out. You know, it's a very normal, mundane thing. But if you have a magical mindset, that becomes a cleansing spell. That becomes a cleansing ritual. You know, you're cleansing your energy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I think there are lots of things like that, that Everyone does. You don't have to be a witch or identify as a witch or a pagan in order to do that type of thing. But the difference is whether we have magic in our mind and in our intention at the time. So that's something that I like to do for cleansing. And then, like I said, as far as personal cleansing goes, I include that with every bath or shower. Um, uh, my throat hurts. I didn't bring any water up here. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that I do really for cleansing. Like, and then I'll, I'll cleanse individual objects if I need to as I use them. If I get a new magical tool, I cleanse it if I feel like it needs it. You know, stuff like that. Um, cleansing the space before I begin something might be something that I do. But again, if it's within my own household, I don't re usually feel like there's that much that I need to cleanse, like, away. Because I've already cleansed the space in general, and I have uh, already cleansed the things that I'm going to use for the working, typically. So it just depends on whether or not I feel like it needs it. If I feel like it needs it, I do it. Um, I like to use incense smoke. I like to use water. I like to use sound. Either bells or drums, or just clapping my hands, stomping my feet, singing, um, using my breath to cleanse certain things, like crystals. I like to just breathe on them, run them underwater. There's many, many things like that. So I do lots of little cleansing things like that. But I think Mad was actually asking about, like, household cleansing, because that's kind of the theme of the overall topic. So yeah. And then for protection, I, you know, there's the classic witch bottle is something that you can look up if you're interested in that. Just Google or, you know, whatever search engine you use, just look up witch bottles for protection. That should come up with websites, articles, things like that for you that will tell you about that type of thing. So there's that very classic thing. Um, and then some people will like, 
hide those in the walls of their house or bury them outside in the yard. And I don't necessarily always do the witch bottle thing, although I definitely have the pieces to do so. What I usually end up doing is more like taking that concept of creating something that represents protection and also is connected to you or the, the beings that live in your household and taking the idea of hiding it somewhere in the house or I actually usually just put them like up on display somewhere in the house so that like when I see it I am reminded of it and by being reminded of it that's adding to its energy um but I usually keep it like up and out of the way somewhere so that like other people won't mess with it or whatever but um or like burying it outside some so it depends on where I live because I've often lived in apartments right but now I live in a house so something else that I got in the habit of doing was using crystals and charging them all together like on an altar charging them for the intention of protection and then scattering them throughout the house usually either at the four corners of the property so like if I was in an apartment I would put them as close as possible to the four corners of that apartment space or the closest to the cardinal directions north south east and west and that might be in the corners or it might be in the middle of a flat wall along the boundaries of my space so in the last apartment that my partner and I shared together, that's what I did. I had crystals that were charged and I put them as close as possible to the four cardinal directions. So one of them was in the back of a closet that was at the southmost wall of our apartment. One was on a shelf in our bathroom that was the northmost wall. And then the other two, the east and west ones, were actually on windowsills that were on the east and west walls. And that kind of, to me, creates a like a web or a net around what is my space. So now we have an actual house. So I haven't done anything like that as far as like outside the property yet. But we are looking to do some more planting and gardening and something um, that I've also done in the past is like going to the plants that are at the boundary lines and sort of communicating to those plant spirits that you know they are the guardians of this boundary and I am like requesting that they hold that boundary for us energetically and then whenever I do magic, whenever I cast a circle, I'm casting that circle around our entire property. I never just do it like around the immediate circle. I have always done it to fill the entire room that I am working in. So that way I feel like I can freely move throughout the room to grab whatever I need and I don't have to worry about walking through the circle or not. Although I have learned a lot of different techniques for how to not worry about that as much in more recent years. But I've always done it just through the whole room. But now I do it so that it's throughout the whole property. So casting a circle of protection around the entire property is something that I would do. Um, shielding can also, it's basically like casting a circle, a, specifically a protective circle around yourself usually is how we think of it. But it can be done around yourself or your entire household, your entire property. When I went to witch camp, the first circle that we all cast together was the camp-wide circle that covered the entire grounds of the camp area. And that circle did not come down until the camp was entirely over. So that was an overarching thing. And that's something that, that you could do as well. And that's something that you could just keep up monthly you know, like renew it monthly, take it down, put it back up kind of thing. Um, if you don't like the idea of leaving one up all the time. But yeah, you know, there are ways of casting circles to allow for whatever kind of movement you have. Traditionally, 
they are set up so that nobody's going through them because they're a container, but you can set them up for different purposes. There are different types of circles for different things. So, yeah, we've also talked about protection magic in earlier years on this collab channel, so I know I have videos about protection magic from years and years ago, and I, I haven't, like, watched any of them recently, so I might have some of the same ideas today. Some things I might be like, oh yeah, no, I don't do it that way anymore. So I can't say whether or not any older videos that I've done on this topic would be helpful, but those are my thoughts for today, here and now. Um, and as far as protection magic goes, I just want to, again, <laughs> tie it into what I was talking about earlier with social justice magic. Protection magic is a thing that a lot of us are doing right now, and if that's something that you feel called to do, I encourage you to do so along with any other actions that you're taking um, to educate yourself or sign petitions, donate to organizations, and whatever the case may be. Um, there are some protection rituals going around social media that you may or may not have already seen, um, some that are specifically for protecting protesters, some that are for the protection of black people, black communities, indigenous communities, and other people of color. There are many, many ways that we can be doing protection magic, not only for ourselves, but for our loved ones and for communities that we want to help protect. And hopefully we are also helping to protect them in other ways, such as signing petitions, making sure that people are aware of upcoming votes that, um, and, and hopefully we're voting for the things that make a big difference in these causes. But also, if we are practitioners of magic, that is one more tool that we have, that is one more thing that we can do. And if we believe in magic, then I believe we should be using it. Because if we're not using it, I feel like that's sort of sending mixed signals to the universe and it can actually be dampening our own power, our own effectiveness in our magic. If we, if we have any doubts about, you know, does magic work? Is it going to work? Should I do it? Ah, I don't know if it's real. You know, I think we all have those doubts, even if we're, even if we've been practicing for decades, right? So you're definitely not alone if you've ever had those doubts. I think we all do. But it is important that we believe in what we're doing. And you may have heard people say, because I do think a lot of people teach, that if we have any doubt, it's not going to work. And I think it's okay to have some doubt and do it anyway, because there's still that like glimmer of hope or trust that it is going to work out, even if we consciously have a little bit of fear around it or whatever but I do believe that even if we have those doubts if we say that we believe in magic we have to be willing to try and let it help in any way that it can otherwise if we're just saying I'm not gonna do this because I don't believe it helps then like yeah I don't think any of my any of my spells are going to do very well if I turn around and say, oh, but I'm not going to do a spell for this other thing because, well, this thing is real and magic isn't going to work for this, so I just won't do it. Because if I believe that, then how could I expect it to work for me any other time? You know, we've got we've to trust it. If, if it's something that we say we believe in, we have to be willing to believe that it will help. And... Yeah, that's always going to be a personal preference. Um, I am participating in several of the communal rituals and spells that have been going around to protect people, to um, break down various you know, blockages and obstacles, systems that perpetuate oppression, and all sorts of things. So if that is something you are interested in, you can probably find a lot of them floating around online, or you can make up your own. And um, 
the same way that you would protect yourself, whatever that may be, shielding, casting a circle around yourself, offering, um, working with the elements, anything like that, that you would normally do for your own household and for your own self, you can also do for other people at this time. Thank you very much for watching and or listening. Thank you, Mad, for this week's topic. Next week is subs week, so I will see you on this channel again in two weeks. So this is the last time you'll see me during Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. I know it seems weird to even say because it hasn't all been happy at all, but I hope that you have an okay day. I hope that you have a great day, but I know that for a lot of us, having an okay day is the best that we can do. And you know what? That counts. That counts. I hope that you rest and recharge and fight another day. And I hope that you know that, of course, I support the LGBTQ community. I am a member of it. Um, and I'm, I'm doing a lot of work to to help various people that I really care a lot about and who I believe very much matter. So thank you again for watching and or listening. I will see you next month. Don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.